Thank you for joining us today. Today we will be discussing Microsoft Dynamics 365 for Sales. This is the second of four sessions. Today we will cover as much as possible, but our topic today will include out-of-the-box features available in sales. Before we begin, let's learn more about Opal Business Solutions. Opal has approximately 20 team members with a wide variety of technical expertise and certification. Opal is also a silver enterprise partner and serves as an extension of your team. They strive to be your help your team in helping you to design and deliver technology solutions to help you anticipate and overcome business challenges. With two offices on the East Coast, Opal provides quick and reliable products and service throughout the United States. Opal is able to provide one stop for your technology needs. Whether looking for enterprise level hardware, SMB equipment, or even certified pre-owned, Opal can provide the equipment to meet your needs. Opal also provides CSP licensing on Microsoft applications while also customizing any software. Finally, Opal's network services team provides the expertise and knowledge to design, upgrade, and support your entire infrastructure. With Opal's team monitoring and maintaining your network, you have the latest security protection and meet the industry verified compliances. I am Emma Critchfield, Sales and Marketing Coordinator of Opal Business Solutions. Let's begin our presentation and learn more about Dynamics 365 for Sales. In our last presentation, we said that sales is part of the Microsoft Dynamics 365 product line of enterprise resource planning and customer relationship management applications. Sales is Microsoft's premier cloud-based CRM as it's used by companies of all sizes to automate key business processes. It continuously records and maintains knowledge on sales opportunities, provides data analysis, and enables reactionary customer service. We also discussed the main entities that make up Dynamics 365 for sales, including the account, contact, lead, opportunity, competitor, product, quote, order, and invoice. Let's begin by test driving our demo system. So we'll go through the sales module and what's included out of the box and review those common entities. So when you're logging into sales, users can personalize their system by adding a logo, changing the colors of the themes of the system, and navigate to anywhere using the sales drop-down menu. You'll actually see your accounts, your contacts, your leads, and opportunities in the main entities that we discussed, and you can select those icons from here and specifically go to where you're looking for. So your salespeople will have access to important information at a glance with attractive graphical dashboards. The software organizes um, the leads into easy to read funnels and charts that helps your salespeople identify opportunity status, sales goals, and active leads. I personally have always been a big fan of dashboards and Dynamics 365 for Sales has multiple options available straight out of the box. The predefined dashboards are based on common use patterns and include several useful views and charts. And in fact, many users find that these dashboards fit their established work pattern and they only need a few customized views. As you can see on the sales dashboards, it has all the activities in the system, any open opportunities, open leads, and I can simply change these views by um, clicking what exactly I want to see. So maybe I want to see my only specific open leads, I can change that as well. This is personally why I like the dashboards, because it enables you to design a workspace for your users that will give them the immediate access to the items that they are working on, whether that be looking into the leads or the opportunities or sales orders, with the tedious searching and sorting already taken care of. Let's go into the account. Here you see a list of the accounts within Dynamics 365 organization. The accounts are companies or vendors that you work with. So with each entity that we look into, we are met with this view. And similar to dashboards, they're out of the box views. And we also have the ability to create custom views as well. So this is all accounts that are in the system. I can change that view to maybe the only active accounts that are assigned to me specifically. 
I'm going to click into force copy. So the accounts are usually the basis for all of your CRM content. In most cases, all parts of CRM is either supposed to be connected directly to an account or a contact, and it's designed to support the use of one of them. So this is the account card. Uh, note that all important information related to the account, including the name, the phone number, the website, um, any contacts related in the primary contact, is all listed here. Um, if there's any activities, so if we had um, closed orders or open up, um, activities, notes, emails, that all would so show here as well. Uh, using accounts for orders and cases and so on allows you to check if a seemingly new customer might have an existing order or case or whichever other entities that you may use. Next, we'll drill in the contacts. So tracking the contacts allows us to capture information on an individual. So obviously note that similar to accounts, you're met with this view. You can change that view as well. I'm gonna click into Jim. So here is the contact card for Jim. Uh, this is everything that we need to see, his name, his title, what company he's associated with, his email, phone number, um, any opportunities that he may be involved in, or any recent cases as well. You can also set uh, the primary way of contacting him if he only wants to be contacted by email or phone or maybe just anything. I'd also like to point out that contacts and accounts are listed under the customer lookup. And as we go further into our sales process, they'll all be listed under the sales lookup. So we're gonna to go to leads next. So a lead entity represents an individual that is identified as someone who is interested in, re in receiving specific information about the products or services offered by a company. So clients use leads to track contacts or accounts that a potential customer who has not been qualified yet. So think of a lead as an unqualified opportunity, no ifs or buts, it's just a potential, but you haven't qualified that potential at all. Sales gives us this lead card that allows us to keep track of what the lead may be interested in, our activities with our follow-ups and phone calls, and et cetera. So when gathering this information, sales also gives us a business process tool up at the top of our lead card, and this helps us complete each step in the sales process along the way until the sale is completely closed. During each step, a check mark will appear when that step is completed. Once all the steps to configure a lead are finished in the end, our goal is to either qualify or disqualify them to see if it's a potential opportunity. If we qualify the lead, that means they're moving forward in, their, in our sales process to an opportunity or if we disqualify them, that means that they're taken out for now. Next, we'll go into opportunities. So the opportunity entity is used for working on a proposal for a customer. It could be a qualified lead, or it could be a raw opportunity created from an existing account. What's important to know about the opportunity is that it should be qualified, meaning that it could only be one or it could only be lost. Thus, these are the only status options available. For example, if I have an opportunity to sell a company my products or services, either they'll buy from me or they won't. They might come back later or request multiple quotes, but it's either a sale or not. So if you think about it this way, then an opportunity can only be won or lost. During the opportunity phase, you present the customer with one or more quotes. And if the customer decides to buy then you convert the quotes to a sales order, and at that time, you close the opportunity. So that's when the order is placed. So when an order is placed, you have won the opportunity, whether it's actually paid or not. Um, we would like to say that please note that sales is just that. It's a customer relationship management system. It's not meant as an accounting system. There are other great Dynamics products out there that we're actually gonna talk about next month. If you scroll down on the opportunity card, you'll note that there's a competitor's pane. The competitor is pretty self-explanatory. It's an entity that is used to create competitor records that can be used in opportunities to identify who you're competing against. So with this example, this Carter Electronics, we can see that we're competing against them in a couple different other opportunities that we have open. If we wanted to write any notes um, that can be placed here, their strengths, their weaknesses, 
next we're going to look at products. So the product entity has a lot of capabilities and it needs to be fairly thought through and planned before you start implementing. There's a lot of possibilities among them. You can bundle your products, um, there's product properties, there's specific price lists, and it goes on. But on our opportunity for audio equipment, if we scroll down, we can see that they are interested in this specific audio equipment. This is now going to lead us into the quotes. Um, as they're ready to move forward. So the quotes are used to present a customer with a solution. It's tightly integrated with both opportunities and order lines. And when a quote is created, you can add information like your address or um, any discounts that you may have. When the quote is finished and ready to be presented, you click the button to activate it. And at this point, you're not allowed to rework it. As you can see at the bottom, it just does say active and all the other um, lines are locked. This is a way to make sure that the quote does not get worked on from the moment it's presented to the customer and until you either retract it or get a request for revision from the customer. Um, at this point, you can simply click the revise button up at the top to edit the quote and present it again. If the customer accepts the quote, you can create a sales order directly from the toolbar in which will include all the details that originally was in the quote. So here, one of the points about what I mentioned earlier about what it means to, to one uh, in Dynamics. When you choose to convert the quote to a sales order, you can set the opportunity to one at the same time. This is because as far as CRM is concerned, a sales order means a sale has occurred, which also underlines how quotes and sales orders are supposed to be used. So you can think of sales orders as an extension of the quote, an invoice, um, and an invoice as an extension of a sales order. They both contain the same information as the quote and has the same connections as the quote as well. So that's another reason for closing an opportunity when an order is created, because the order should be active until all the invoices are paid and there's no need to keep the opportunity open because it, it, because it has been won and you're finished with it. For many companies, there will even be different teams working on opportunities and sales orders. So just close that opportunity as soon as possible after the order is created and start working on your next prospect. Um, at this time, we can answer any questions or concerns. Um, you can use that by submitting uh, a chat on the right-hand side of your screen. It doesn't look like we have any questions for today. So remember to look for our monthly newsletter sent the fourth week of the month, as well as our Microsoft email sent the first week of the month in order to keep updated on the latest tips and features. Thank you and please remember to look for the video and others on the Opal YouTube channel.